Hello everyone, my name is Randeep Singh. I'm a technical marketing engineer with Cisco's Catalyst 9000 Switching Business Unit. In this video, we'll be talking about ABB, which is short for Audio Video Bridging. So we'll get into the meat and bones of it. So we'll be talking about what exactly is Audio Video Bridging, how does it work, and we'll talk about the importance of ABB, and then we'll further move on to the use cases. Towards the end of the video, I will also provide a brief configuration as well as a demo of the solution as a whole. But before we get to all of that, what exactly is audio video bridging and why do we need it? So if we look at this cluster of cables here on the left side, we see what a legacy AV network looks like. And there's a lot going on here. It's messy, it's convoluted, and it's just cumbersome. How can we simplify that though? So with our ABB network, that is essentially what we're doing. AVB is a common name for the set of technical standards developed by the IEEE Audio Video Bridging Task Group of the IEEE 802.1 Standards Committee. This task group was later renamed the Time Sensitive Networking TSN Task Group in November 2012 to reflect the expanded scope of its work. IEEE 802.1 defines a set of standards that provide the means for highly reliable delivery of low latency, time synchronized AV streaming services through layer two ethernet networks, which consists of ensuring proper time synchronization, which is set by the standard IEEE 802.1 AS, proper stream reservation, which is standard IEEE 802.1 QAT, as well as queuing, which is standard IEEE 802.1 QAV. So within this presentation, I will be going through these multiple standards one by one. So first of all, time synchronization, right? So de defined by IEEE 802.1 AS, the Generalized Precision Time Protocol, GPTP, provides timing and synchronization for time-sensitive applications on layer two devices. GPTP is a simplified version of the PTP default profile and its purpose is to make sure that all the AVB devices are in a synchronization with each other. Like PTP, in AVB domain, one device is selected as the grandmaster while the other devices stay in sync with that grandmaster. Then moving forward, we have the IEEE 802.1 QAT standard, which is the stream reservation protocol, SRP, as well as multiple stream reservation protocol, which is MSRP. Is, and this is an end-to-end -end traffic admission control system that helps ensure the availability of resources such as bandwidth and latency that is required to transport AV streams. MSRP has a purpose of making sure that all the various AVB streams are preserved and to ensure that only AVB streams that have the bandwidth to complete from the talker to the listeners are onboarded to the network. Then lastly, we have the IEEE 802.1 QAV standard, and this is the forwarding and queuing for time sensitive streams uh, providing AV traffic scheduling capabilities for mainstream ethernet and other network switches. This has the purpose of making sure that the AVB streams are prioritized and transmitted correctly across the AVB network. AVB endpoint devices can have predefined classes defined by the different vendors um, and the AVB network will honor whatever those classes are. And then we get into traffic shaping, which helps regulate the rate and bandwidth media traffic is allowed to use. Now that we have discussed the components and standards, what does the end solution actually look like? With MSRP, the GPTP standard is initiated to mandate time synchronization. Then MSRP initiates QoS policy on the AVB switch ports and signals to the AVB talkers and listeners to begin to check for resources on the AVB network to ensure that there is enough networking bandwidth and ensuring proper latency. Then the QoS shaper dynamically adjusts the stream of data while also allocating 75% AVB network bandwidth for SR class A and B devices. Then MSRP adds the layer two multicast route beginning the start of the AVB stream flow. Having discussed the technicalities, 
Why do we actually need AVB? Traditionally, for audio video networks, there have been complex requirements where we require point-to-point -point cabling of end clients to the source stream with various different cables, and those are non-Ethernet based. And this introduced a lot of complexity into the infrastructure to maintain an audio video network. Like I showed in that image in the beginning of this presentation, it's just very messy. With AVB though, we can take the complex requirements of audio video networks and move them over to an ethernet based network. Simply put, we can connect the audio video endpoints to our ethernet network and build the audio video streams between the sources and the receivers, in turn eradicating the point to point connections required for audio video networks, since now everything is converged on the one ethernet network. This in turn allows for any AVB source on the network to communicate with any receiver on the AVB network. And there are many benefits to this, including lowering capital and operating expenses, improved audio video experience with latency that is less than two milliseconds and flexible deployment speeds as well. And the use cases are plenty. Digital courtrooms and government newsrooms, for example. They require precision timestamping across the network infrastructure and AV endpoints for digital record keeping. For example, judicial courtrooms where a judge may have one mic while there are multiple speakers in the room that broadcast audio. This is one particular use case where Cisco AVB can ensure proper time syncing of AV endpoints. Another example would be conference rooms and town halls where business announcements are carried out and those need delivery in high quality and low latency. And we also have media and entertainment customers or content creators that require high quality AV streams at variable bandwidths that can be used by different teams to enhance the content production. Sports stadiums, for example, where there is one audio and video source which is streaming to multiple speakers and televisions. As a whole, the Catalyst 9000 series of switches are there to provide for the AVB needs of customer networks. Okay, so now let's get hands-on with the actual configuration of the AVB solution. And so I have a lab topology here where I have one video source, which is a laptop that I have connected to a BiAmp device, which is my AVB device, which is on one side connected to Gigabit Ethernet 101, on my Catalyst 9300, and on the other side, it is connected to the other BiAmp device, which is on Gigabit 102 on the Catalyst 9300. And then in turn, I have the HDMI uh, display screen, which is my receiver at the bottom shown here, which is connected to my BiAmp device. So now let's get hands-on with the actual demo. So moving to our switch here, I have a Catalyst 9324P, which is running iOS version 17.1202. And so for example, just to give a little uh, glimpse into this, so if I was to do the show AVB stream command here, just to showcase if AVB is already enabled here, I can see that AVB is not enabled. And let's actually go look at the lab setup as a whole right now. So here I have my lab setup and I have my laptop here, which is playing a video. And as you can see on my screen on the left, the video is not playing. Um, so, you know, we have the source, but the receiver is not receiving anything because nothing is configured for AVB on the setup yet. But now let's go ahead and configure that. So all I need to do to enable AVB is just a few command lines. So for First of all, let's go into config and all I need to do is hit ABB. That's it. Okay. And so moving forward from this, I need to configure MSRP on the switch and that uses VLAN two by default to control all uh, default communication. But if another static VLAN is to be used, it can be configured using the AVB VLAN command and then you specify it which VLAN. But for the sake of this setup, we'll just keep it simple. So I'm gonna go into my conf T and I'll do VLAN two. And, and then as I had shown in my topology, gigabit 101 is where my um, laptop is connected. And then gigabit 102 is where my receiver is connected on the other side, 
right? So if I go back here to my switch and I do show IP interface brief, you can see the state of gigabit 101 and 102 as up. Okay, so those connections are up. And now let's go ahead and configure those interfaces. So first of all, 101, where my laptop is, I'm gonna do switch port mode trunk and that'll give it access to VLAN 2. I'll go exit and I'll do interface GI 102. You can do switch port mode trunk and that'll give it access to VLAN 2 as well. And that is all that was required in order to enable AVV. So now if I do show AVV stream, you'll see that there is output here. And now let's go look at my lab setup. So here you will see that we have the source playing on the receiver. So the video is playing there in complete harmony. Everything is synced, all right? If you look at it closely, there's, I can't see any latency, right? Um, and that is the beauty of the solution as a whole. And now if we come back onto our switch, I just wanna showcase some show commands, right? So let me do show AVB uh, domain real quick. And here we can see, uh, you know, a quick little priority uh, code. I can see what VLAN we're using, right? I can see that gigabit 101 and 102, they're in an up state. I can get details such as that. Furthermore, right, so MSRP was one piece of uh, our three structured ABB solution, right? And then we also have PTP, right? So if I do show PTP brief, I can see that gigabit 101 and 102 are the PTP states and they're in master, right? And then, you know, this is uh, the GPTP operation states, right? So the generalized time protocol state. And then moving forward, if I go into show PTP clock, I can see that we're using the boundary clock, for example. I can see which IEEE profile it is, 802.1 AS. I can see the clock identity. I can see the priority, right? So I can get all those details, which can help me debug if there are any issues related to this solution, right? And furthermore, lastly, I also wanna do the show AVB stream command. And this further shows me the stream ID, Right, I can see information such as the incoming interface, the destination, the class uh, as well, right? As well as the rank and the bandwidth. So all this data can be used to troubleshoot if there are any issues, okay? And now if we talk about QoS, which was the third pillar that we discussed in the presentation earlier. So if I do show policy map interface GI101, for example, right? I can see that it's a AVB input policy remark B right here, right? And then I can see the match and all the QoS related data here. And I can furthermore go deeper into it, which can help me debug the solution as a whole. So this concludes this video, right? And as we can see, the AVB solution simplifies our life a ton when it comes to anything related to AV. Thank you for watching and hope to see you again on the Catalyst Switching YouTube channel.